save it and close it. Let's check it out and we'll open up the balance sheet, run it. So now accounts receivable is good as of here, right? We're still, we still have that 450 in place, but then we reversed it in the next time frame so that we're back to where we where we were here so that now the next step that the that the that the client is that our bookkeeping department's going to do for Sam the guitar man for example if i go into Sam the guitar man in the sales tab customers and then go down to Sam uh Sam the guitar man so notice we have this outstanding unapplied thing right there that's the point that's very obvious so we if i talk to sam and they and he comes in and says hey i'm finishing up my sale we can make an invoice and apply that out to it quite easily that's good on the on the accounting or bookkeeping side of things very transparent so then i'm going to go back up and say the other side went to unearned revenue and we could see that straight up nice and easily down here so it was 450 and then we took it back down to zero no impact on the income statement if i look at the sub ledger to the right and i run this again run it again to this is as of 228 so we're good on 228 and then i'm going to bring it on up to 033123 run it and so now we've got all this journal entry stuff happening down here notice it nets each other out 450 450 the 525 the 525 but it doesn't remove itself from the report because it's because it's not like an invoice being connected to the payment the journal entries mess things up because they're not designed to kind of match each other out in the accounting system but again hopefully it's down at the bottom so it doesn't mess anyone up if we see that same thing in here in the customer center it's in the customer tab and it, we didn't mess up like any of our clients here like sam but we've got the zzz customer down below which isn't really a customer it's that's where all of the junk that we put went if you don't want this sub ledger at all then you could do your adjusting entry to another accounts receivable account just to show the adjusting entry but you can't set it up as an accounts receivable type account because that's what is used to create the sub ledger you'd have to make it as an other current asset account and then you wouldn't need to do this whole thing with the ZZZ, which is only here because QuickBooks won't let us post to accounts receivable without using a customer, which is usually good because it makes us, forces us to be in balance with the sub ledger, but it does cause problems periodically, such as with the adjusting entries, if necessary to have them. All right, so that's it. That's all we need to do. It looks MUI B to the end. Let's go to the tab to the right and look at, look at our reports. So I'm gonna open the hand boogie, scroll down and check it out, check out the reports. Let's type in journal, Let's look at the journal and uh, closing the hand boogie as of 022823 to 022823. These are the adjusting entries we did last time and I'm gonna filter them, customize up top, filter by transaction type and journal run it so these are all the adjusting entries we did these two are not adjusting entries but everything else adjusting entries this is the last one we did last time which is going to be reversed and notice how i'm going to reverse it like like i put the credit i put the order top to bottom like this so it'll be in that order this way as well so it'll have a credit on top i did the same thing for this one i believe which this one is a fairly complex transaction so if i was trying to compare the adjusting entry to the reversing entry it would be easiest in my opinion to have the same accounts from top to bottom as opposed to, to messing up the order of the debits to have the debits on top and whatnot so let's go up here and say plus the debits on top and whatnot <laughs> uh, what a rhyme rhyme in it okay so the reversing entry I think I messed up and hit and entered it as of the wrong date. I think I entered it at the end of the year. So let me go fix that. I'm going to go back on over and say, let's go to my unearned and go into, yeah, I put it in there at the end of the period. 
but the reversing entry should be at the beginning of the period. So hopefully I put a note in so you see that I messed up purposely, of course. 030123. Okay. So after the purposeful mistake, let's do it again and check it out, run it back. And so let's just refresh the screen this way. So there we go. So I'll close up the ham boogie. Okay, so there we have it. So now notice I got the credit on top and then the debit so I can compare it. So this looks a little bit unnatural if you're used to having debits on top. But again, comparing it, I think works good. Same thing I did up here, we did last time. So that one looks a little bit unnatural possibly because the debits are not on top. But when you compare it to the adjusting entry, I think it's more comparable easily, more easy to look at, more easy to interpret what happened to distill down the story that happened. And if you can format your transactions, your adjustments to better remind you of what you did, then I think that's more important than having the debits on top. Okay, close, open up the hamburger.